Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. I'm Tori. I'm Jesse. I'm Kayla. And I'm Josh. And today I move Tori to that end of the I panel. I know. So today we are going to be going over a short story that has uh, caught my attention uh, uh, because uh, Adrian and Dalton from Strip Covered Lit uh, challenged me to read this uh, two years ago. I read and uh, released a discussion video that I will leave in the description box. Uh, but uh, that is a short story called The Semplica Girl Diaries by George Saunders. Uh, and it is featured in the 10th of December collection. Also found online. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, it was in the New Yorker beforehand. Uh, but uh, I wanted to read more, so... I read this, and I encourage this a bit more than online, but if you need to uh, acquire it out of convenience, uh, online is still a good option. But I have a discussion starter for The Simple Girl Diaries, and that is, if there was one word or sentence you would use to describe the narrator in the story, what would it be and why? And to start, I just wanted to go down the line and... Uh, I would say about uh, 45 seconds, uh, giving your word or sentence and evaluation, uh, elaboration. Oh, mine is very, very, very short. Cliché. Overused. I feel like his character is kind of very much of the same. I, I feel like he's a very um, thinly veiled, hit you over the head sort of message of, of consumerism in today's day and age. And that's what I feel like. It's very thinly veiled. It's not done in a very um, subtle way. Okay. I would choose uh, relatable, actually, instead, because I feel like um, the the narrator uh, he he wants to give his children everything that he can. He wants them to feel accepted at school, and I mean, what parent doesn't want that for their kids? And then they go and end up, you know, getting all these extravagant things that they don't need and spending money that they don't need to spend just, you know, help their kids do better socially. Um, so I feel like that that's a little bit relatable to parents uh, in the world. So, I, I don't know, keeping up with the Joneses is what I thought of. Um, just, you know, socially acceptable. Mine was literally keeping up with the Joneses. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like he's exactly what Tori said. He's just kind of there for the consumerism. He's just trying to keep up with the world around him, basically. I'm going to use the same uh, term that I used for him in my discussion, uh, my individual discussion. He's a shallow piece of scum. Because <laughs> I think that he... I, this is a, a dystopian work, because this mm -hmm. is consumerism at its worst. But he is so uh, shallow, the fact that he... He, he just about, he plays favorites with his kids, and Lily, the oldest, he, she's her, fa she's his favorite because she's the oldest, and, and he thinks that that is he literally a, says that, a, key, yeah. <laughs> a key sense of importance. But Lily has this great sense of entitlement and need for uh, materialistic wealth, uh, mm -hmm. which it doesn't help that her friend is Leslie, and Leslie... Can, uh, she's uh, greedy to the point that uh, three streams or six llamas isn't enough, but nine ponies or horses because and the, a pond is. Because that's the she was raised in, yeah. Yeah, it's that idea that once you, be, once you receive so many great things, you cannot appreciate them and you only want more. Yeah. And that's what the whole story's about. And to... Uh, the narrator of this piece, uh, he feels that money is the only way that one person can obtain their happiness. Mm -hmm. It's not. That's an, an, an intuitive thing. He has to be able to uh, work toward that. The, I, I agree and disagree, um, just for the most part, that yes, you're right, there is other ways to attain happiness other than money, but when it comes down to it, money makes the world go round. You need money to pay bills. You need money to keep your family alive. You need money to do this. You need money to do that. And yes, he's wrong in thinking that how he approaches his, it. yes, how he approaches it. Exactly. It's 
I mean, I, I get it. Like, you want to, like, you have a small child, she has a friend who has everything and basically picks on her, which I don't agree with, but, you know, like, that's, girls. That, that's how it is. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I have this and you don't. And it's not that the Lily isn't appreciative of, they win this money and they give her what they can and she writes the thank you notes and she's so happy that she cries with her dad and like is appreciative of it, which is great. So she's not so much a spoiled child like Leslie is, but, but you know, I he's just trying to give his children, you know, what he feels that they deserve. And I wouldn't necessarily call him scum for that, for thinking that his children deserve all these materialistic kind of things. Granted, I agree he should be teaching them better values, <laughs> But at the yeah. same time, it's like you can't really blame him for wanting to give his children something nice. I think nice. the turning point, though, is the character of Farmer Rich. He's my favorite character in the whole yeah, thing because he, he makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. He worked for his dollar, mm -hmm. and he feels money should be used to better yourself, go to college. But he's spending it on Semplica Girls, which are basically... They're, they're long, they're But... More oh, so, they're not. girls from third world countries. Yeah, so say, it's soft core human trafficking. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then to add on top of it all, they're strung by their skulls and are yeah. literally hung by in their heads way, in a painless but way. But he says it's no big deal. And then you have Ava, so, who's also somewhat of a voice of reason. She's more of yeah. a sympathetic voice of reason. But so while I how agree can with someone be happy? when their job is to be sent away to another country and serve as a lawn ornament. I think that's just kind of the... I mean, we we know better. We know better. But I think that's just kind of um, the view of the times. Because even think back to, like, slavery. Didn't people say the same thing about slavery? Like, oh, you know, this is, this is what's best for them. This is what they want. Or same thing with indentured servants. Or any time that any human was put... In a lesser than position, mm. the uppers, the as people who are higher up, always said, "Yeah, yeah. As as this, is, this is what's best for them. This is what they want." It's the same ish difference. It is an here. ongoing exactly. thing, but exactly. it's still not wasting your money on. He, uh, he went. Uh, the narrator wins ten thousand dollars on a scratch off. I think. He, he, oh, sorry. Continue. Yeah, he wins ten thousand dollars on a scratch off. He can spend the money to help better the kids, but Semplica girls, as much as it's as it may be a continuation of uh, social injustices, it's also a waste. That's a waste. Hobo clown fishing is a waste. The, the Lily is into, granted, at her point in life, she may not know better. The, the grand, uh, the, the girl reading to her sister, uh, uh, the little statues and the tchotchkes, which, to me, I wouldn't be spending money on that, but uh, that's something you begin to, you can begin to develop uh, as an adult, realize, is that even worth spending your money on? Uh, some people well, it was bad well. parenting. And, yes, and it is. It, like I said, uh, the unfortunate thing was I feel like mm. the book kind of was very heavy, not the book, but mm. the, the story was very, very heavy-handed in its way of saying that you know, consumerism is bad, once we objectify people and we lose sight of what they are as a human being, that's bad. And it's, I feel like there were better ways of being able to do that. And it was an interesting concept of having it from this, you know, the dad's point of view and it kind of that breakdown and that psychological horror of he's not seeing them as people. You know, he starts talking about like, well, it's put through their brain, but I heard that it's painless. So it's, but it's kind of like a, Behavior that we all do, and we've all caught ourselves doing right. it at one point or another, where we've taken that, what's been spoon-fed us from the social media world that we live in, and kind of continue it forward. So I understand where it's coming from, and it's kind of showing, like, that's bad. Like, holding it up to the mirror and saying, like, this is bad, this is something that we need to focus on. But I feel like it kind of does this 180 on itself, where it's so bad, you're just like, whatever. And it, it kind of turned me off to reading it, because I was like, okay, I get it, I get it. I get it. And it became such an nth degree that he stretched these characters out in such a fashion that they became so flat that you had no connection to the story at all. I think at least with the 60 pages, he tried to provide depth for many of uh, the characters. Uh, I don't think 
Granted, I don't think Thomas had as much depth, uh, aside from the fact that he was there. the youngest boy. <laughs> yeah, he was and just there. He was just... Uh, I forgot that he was around until they mentioned him, and I was like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> I think one. that... Uh, I feel it was the way that I think it was a smart strategy to provide depth for the Semplifier girls, uh, saying what kind of background they came from and their endeavors. Uh, because I'm saying that they they are yeah. people until he poo poos it away of saying this is for a better life. They're sending the money home, like d the rhetoric that we hear nowadays of you know mm. like what we said yeah. was the mm -hmm. same stuff, mm -hmm. different you know era of it existing. So once you got you had that little bit of it, and then it kind of just went by the wayside again. And yes, that is what happens, but it was done in such a fashion that it was like, okay, here it is. And mm. it wasn't very original or, or I think, done in such a way that I felt was, like, crafty. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of the flatness of the characters and, like, that sort of aspect of it, though, comes from mm. the format of this. Mm -hmm. Because it's mm. written as a diary, and a lot of times in the diary... You know, you're not sitting there explaining the personality mm -hmm. of your kids, but you know? But I've read books that are diaries, that are supposed to be first-person accounts that are fictional, that are mm. supposed to be real, and it gives the person the ability to feel like they are dynamic people, and you hear their thoughts, and you hear, you know, their thoughts on a different type of person, and... and but this is strictly violent. his narration. He's yeah. very unreliable. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not only that, too, I mean... You look at it, he's a father that's probably never written any kind of diary thing before, and he just tells himself, I'm just going to write every day for a year. And so, I mean, I remember the first time I tried to start a diary, I just talked about people like, oh, and then my brother did this. I didn't describe my brother, and my brother has glasses and a pointed nose like a lizard. That's and not like, what you know. <laughs> you know? But, it, like, he, like I, I never went, like, super in-depth, and especially for... A father of three who's paying all these bills and working so hard I kind of like I, I expected it to not be very detailed okay. as soon as I realized who was writing it mm -hmm. like I expected it to be like oh my gosh and all the grammatical errors drove me insane uh, yeah and I, but, I think that like, like, his, uh, but again that's how saying. it was supposed to right. be that was my get up it felt very forced yeah mm -hmm. and I know that sounds very silly but it almost felt like I'm doing this on purpose, and I do not think, like, I understand there are individuals who maybe they're writing and they don't read a lot, so they don't have necessarily the all of the nuances of writing. But at the same time, it felt so, like, I am putting aff affected. It so, felt it so affected that it was just like a, I lost the character. I'm just looking at, you know, the way it's being the said. way that yeah. it's being written. And I understand this person is supposed to, it's supposed to prove this person is a lower economic standard, maybe not necessarily had the best education, and like, that's all understandable. But on the same token, I feel like just because you're not going to know necessarily mm -hmm. to descriptively write about somebody, the goings on and how the whole entire story unfolds felt very mechanical and very like, Fable-ish. It felt very like cautionary tale, and there was no subtle covering. It's dystopian, of it. so yeah. of course I think that it, there's a cautionary tale. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't want to get smacked in the face with this dystopic. This is how we're going to be. I'd like it to actually be a story, and mm. it didn't feel like it was a story. It was a hypothetical that somebody tried to write down and and, and put themselves in the mindset of this person. And it didn't I think that there was enough of a story uh, that helped it flow. I think more I was, so than I was interested uh, in it. I was. Uh, I actually. Helen. I texted you earlier. I was like, "What was the last line of it? I want to make sure I have the full story because I felt like it just it did it just, it just abruptly ended. ended. Yeah. And I yeah, was like, it "Abruptly ends." Did yeah. my mm -hmm. like because I found it online, Insane. so I was like, "Maybe yeah. I didn't was get it all of that of it." Yeah, yeah. like it was just an excerpt and. And Maybe I wasn't time sure. To to their senses is what they. <laughs> yeah, I really wanted them to, and and that's what I was thinking mm. the whole time too. Because I did, I just ended up describing it to my coworker like like this. They just and it's like normal for their society to just have these lawn ornaments that are people, um, and like it's just whatever. And so I'm I'm talking to my coworker. I'm like, but I'm thinking, okay, there's probably more to it where he's learning, like, okay, they're actual people and I should save them and I'm like thinking of this whole like, you know, recognize that they're human beings and not decorations and you're not whatever. living in that world. Yeah, and right. then all of a sudden it ends and he's still thinking that 
their lawn ornaments. And I'm like, well, that was very and unsatisfying. And that's more, that's <laughs> more afraid of getting in trouble with the law mm -hmm. and his kid getting in trouble with the law. So then he doesn't, the fact that again, like, they're, they're objects. So they yeah. become objects uh, yeah. indefinitely at that point in time. Yeah. I have to say that, like, it left me wanting to know more about that world. Like, I had, it left me with questions about how did this come to be and, like, what what's going to happen to these girls after this? And, like, I felt like I wanted to know more. I just, it didn't end on, like, a note that I was happy with. I would have been happy if they at least, like, found the girls and been like, okay, well, we found them. I don't even have to know what happened to them afterwards. I just wanted to know if they found them. But in the real like, world, like, that kind of stuff, like, that happens. Yeah, no. People just and go the, missing. And, yeah. like, that's not, the, the whole point is, like, like trying, to show, trying to show that, like, once you objectify someone... Game over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are, there's no help for you. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you don't know what happens to them, I think is the point and kind of resolves it in that fashion because this guy is now so focused on, oh, I broke the law. Oh, my daughter broke the law because she did something that I can't understand because they were just objects in the front yard. They were doing what they thought, you know, they were doing a job. Um, so, like, you lost that. And it rounded itself and I was like, oh, okay. And I, I really didn't. I don't, I didn't, I, very rarely do I read something where I'm like, I did not like this. I did not like this. I don't know, there was something about it that I just didn't connect with. Mm. I actually, I, I have to, I not agree with you, Tori. I actually, I, and that's I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, disagree. No. Yeah, yeah, I disagree. You I said disagree not agree with me. Like, this is my personal opinion oh, on yeah. it, and you have a different perspective on life. So. Yeah, and I, I think, and the only reason why I have to say that I did like it is because, like I said at the beginning of the discussion, like, I found it relatable. Um, no, I don't have any children, but we all know Michael has a child that, mm -hmm. you know, I You've taken, taken care of. Role. Yeah, yeah that's been that's on the channel. understandable. It, she's been on the channel, exactly. So, but you know, adorable. I want to give her the things that I never had, and I want to give her the things that Michael's never had, and, we, like, we want to do things for her to make her life better, but to also, you know, like, we don't want her to want for anything. Um, but on the same and, token, but, you understand that it's not material. Exactly. And so that's why I'm saying, like, I I don't agree with how he went about it, mm. but at the same time I can understand where it's like he wants his daughter to be socially accepted by ob obviously their rich neighbors um, and her rich friends. It's like, yeah. okay, you know what, if we had rich friends and or whatever, chances are, okay, maybe we'd splurge and get her that newest pair of shoes that everybody's wearing. Like, just so that way, you know, she's not going to be like, well, I have these ratty tatty shoes. Why can't I have nice shoes like my friend? Again, you know, it's not something that I'm going to do all the time for the child. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to give them that, like, little edge to be more socially acceptable so that uh, they they aren't depressed and they aren't picked on and they're not... So I never had... Growing like, up, I never had that. Like, yeah, I didn't really have I it had either, but my brother did. Like yeah. that. So, like, I never really, like, I was not a name brand kid. And I'm not making fun of anybody. Like, that's the kind of life you live. That's the kind of life you live. But, like, for me, it was... I don't care if it came in a primary color and it had no name on it. Like, if it's, if it's mm -hmm. doing its job and it's built to be, you know, dependable, I was perfectly fine with that. So being friends with those who have more than me or trying to prove that you are affluent never really kind of was that jive for me. I kind of marched to my own drum, and I was fine with it, and, and so I don't, I think the other thing is I see a little bit of my biological father in this dude, where it's all material and he doesn't understand that it's not, it's the, the worth that you're trying to prove to your mm -hmm. kid that you don't need to necessarily give them a physical object to show that you love them, because that was his way of showing his love to us was by like giving just, them. Things he would just that purchase you things and, yeah. and literally we would go to places and be like, "Great, we're here," and I would and like just sit in the hotel room. If we like went on a vacation, it was all about the big flourish. It was all about the price tag, mm -hmm. which he never really had the money to do to begin with. But like that was it. And so like I'm thinking back to that, thinking like, "Well, that's pointless." So, and it is, and you're totally right. Yeah, it, it yeah. is. So that's where it I'm is pointless. But yeah, when that's you're in I'm that moment, from. especially like. Especially if you grew up with hardships, like, mm -hmm. you know, I had, I was oh, like, raised by a single mother, so, like, while I had the best upbringing I possibly could Same. have ever asked for, I know my mom wanted to give us more, you know, I know that my mom would have bought us those expensive shoes if she could have, you know, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that I would have wanted them, mm -hmm. but I, she would have if she could have. He, he wants to do everything for Lily, but then you have Ava, and you have yeah. Thomas, so yeah. he, he has mm -hmm. two other kids. I mean, I'm Ava in the middle. was more of... Ava was more grateful, though, for what she had, and yeah. her concern was the mistreatment, the fact that 
people were being used as lawn ornaments. And that's where I find it being annoying, aside from not only the writing, is you have that voice of reason, and it's in a kid. Mm -hmm. And it's very obvious. It's saying yeah, that like, children are in our future. Yeah, from the mouth of babes. Yeah, or something. exactly. And, and, and so you have that, and it, again, mm -hmm. it feels very like hit you over the head. Here's this trope of the child knows better than the adults, and in this dystopian future. So it again mm -hmm. felt very like stereotyped and very. Mm -hmm. I don't it was, know, it was definitely a keeping mm. up with the Joneses kind of story, where mm. you know, just trying to be like everybody else to be accepted. Um, and I, I feel like there's really no other way to say it. Just mm -hmm. like you said, consumerism. Yeah. Um, but I, I did find those other like underlying notes about like parenting and just trying to give your kids the best. Mm -hmm. They were there, but they were just so obscured by yeah, the, they were the smacking in the face with morality that it was just like I don't care. And that that was the turn off, and I felt kind of bad at first, but then I continued reading. And I was like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I feel like Ava. Ava reminded me of like when I was a kid. I went through this phase where I was like, I'm, I have to be a vegetarian. I, I have, have to my save the sister. animals. Yeah, like it's I gotta hug all the trees and like, you know. And I'm not again. I'm not condoning the the behavior in this book, but it's a sign of the times and like. You know, looking back on that, I was like, well, I was a kid. Like, of course I wanted to be a vegetarian and save all the animals, yeah, see, you know? Here's the thing, yeah. though. My little sister wanted to be, like, at, from a very young age, that was her. She's that now. And she's yeah, got I mean, a I job work with because animals. of it. Yeah, so, like, I work she, with animals. So she I still... works with um, her school for, like, uh, green environmentalism, stuff like that. So that stuff is around, and it is something that is yeah, viable. Yeah, yeah, So course, the fact that, course. like, you have this kid who does something extreme, which it has been done in the past, and, and it's kind of just left there and you're looking at it from a very weird perspective, I, the focus is off. That's yeah, just, I yeah. agree. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway. Do we have any final thoughts? I think I've said all I had to say on this, so. <laughs> I don't <laughs> say anything more than I haven't. Yeah. yeah. I think I pretty much said it Yeah, I think we pretty much sung that baby to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> if there's anything I... Anything, if you want to watch more, I'll have the, my previous discussion in the description box, but I think I, it was great time discussing it with people. Yeah. So, <laughs> we I, had a I, lot of I opinions. Worth, yeah, oh. it was very mixed. Oh. Because, I like that uh, but granted, <laughs> I know we were uh, next, uh, between Tori and Jesse, I agree with Jesse when it comes to uh, liking or disliking it. Oh. And where would you stand, <laughs> Very rare. I, I, like it. Okay. Very I wanted, I wanted more of it. You put it. me I on the timeout chair. <laughs> I've put Charlie in timeout too. <laughs> but, You're not Charlie chair. Okay. <laughs> and he was in that chair uh, uh, a few times. <laughs> it's so if he, you know, hits this way hard enough, we'll all just accidentally <laughs> get, get me out of the frame. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I, I would not <laughs> want to do that. And you know why I would not want to do that? I would not want to do that because it would hit my poor books. Oh no. <laughs> Value of Tori to Josh, right here. <laughs> this is the real reason why he keeps me around. But if you're interested in checking out uh, the Temple of the Girl Diaries and some of George Saunders' other short stories, uh, you can find it in 10th of December. Uh, he's come out with more short story collections, and he's come out with a Man Booker award winning novel in Lincoln in the Bardo. Thank you for tuning in, and be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. Uh, I can pretty much assure you that there will be at least one male panelist. <laughs> and until next time, keep reading. Bye.